He's from Southern Illinois, and I thought they talked slower down there. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. My name is Jerry Prasapio, and I'm a former compulsive gambler that, by the grace of God, was rescued and delivered from, from this terrible addiction that you just heard about. I'd like to begin, uh, one of my favorite scriptures is Revelation 12, uh, verse 11. And they have defeated him that would be Satan because of the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and because of their testimony. And they were not afraid to die. So today, I just, I'm here today to share my testimony of what God is, has done in my life and how he did rescue me from this addiction in hopes that it, it may help anyone out there that's hearing it. I trace my gambling back to as early as third grade. A friend of mine, a close friend of mine, had a, a basement and he had a, a poker table down in his basement, his folks had. Beautiful green felt, you know, so we started playing penny ante poker. So we didn't use card tables, little, little, you know, card tables. This was a professional table. And I remember even back then, it was pretty neat, you know, this felt on there and they had cup holders for your or if you had a pop or whatever, but they always told us, so, you know, don't get any pop on the, on the green felt. Uh, the penny, the pennies uh, we were playing for, you know, my parents actually knew where I was and what I was doing back then, but to them, you know, it was just penny any poker. Uh, I wasn't out running the streets, you know, they, you know, knew what I was doing. And we would, we would play after school, and at 5 o'clock the game had end because we had to go to our homes to eat dinner. But I remember even then, when I would look at the clock and see, you know, coming close to 5 o'clock, I still wanted to play. You know, I was kind of sorry that I had uh, the game had to end. If I had won, especially winning was kind of a thrill back then to walk away a particular day with, with money more than I came with. So it, it's kind of interesting that even in that early, early stage that it started. After that, I, I started then pitching nickels, and then I advanced to quarters, dimes, pitching meaning, you know, every two lines, and dimes would bounce all over. So I went from, like I say, nickels to quarters. But I was seeing already, like, in fifth, sixth, seventh grade, uh, a trend was beginning in that I started to hang out and gamble with people that were older than me. So like when I was in fifth and sixth, seventh grade, I was already gambling with high school people because friends of mine, you know, were still playing penny any poker, you know. So I was out, you know, hustling newspaper route jobs, working at butcher shops, and and other friends of mine were already even at that early age starting to open up their own bank accounts. But I was every cent that I made was was going toward uh, pitching, pitching, and then I started then playing even in higher stake poker games up at a bowling alley. So in eighth grade, again, I was playing with most kids in high school. Very seldom won. They probably were cheating me when I think back on it. But just the fact that I was with these guys and playing for larger sums of money, you know, it just seemed, seemed like it was, it was what I wanted to do. There was a thrill, thrill in it. After that, uh, it was around, I graduated, then gone on to high school, and I graduated high school. My folks, neither of them were gamblers, but they like to go to Arlington Racetrack uh, once a year. And so when I was a senior in high school, they took me with them on their first, on, on my first trip to the racetrack. And I got a $2 daily double where you have to pick the winner of the first race along with the second race. And I remember I, I, I played the numbers six and six. And the six horse won the first race, and the six horse went on to win the second race and the Daily Double paid $80. And boy, I thought I found heaven on earth. I said, boy, picking horses is, is the easiest thing <laughs> that, that I can do. And I chased that $80 for many years after, and I was hooked on, on, on the racetrack. Uh, can, again, use that slide. It says, what parents do in moderation, children will carry it to excess. And I sure did. I also, after graduating high school, then I went on to college and it was then I started, I found a book, a bookie at college and I started playing sports bets with them. And I remember, again, it started out innocently. I played three, three games the first Saturday. They were uh, college basketball games. I bet, bet $10 on each game. And the guy told me, now if you lose, you got to pay $11 for, for the 
10. But if you win, you just get the $10. I couldn't understand why do you have to pay, pay 11 for 10, but he said that's the juice and that's my, you know, my commission or whatever. And so, and I, again, the first Saturday I won the three college games and won $30. And again, I see, I saw a pattern not only in my own life, but with the people that, you know, when I finally hit bottom and uh, got help in, in rooms, uh, self-help rooms for gambling, uh, I saw that same thing happen in a lot of other people's lives. When you get an early big win in anything, it's, it's the worst thing that can happen to you. So when I hit that daily double, when I won these, this sports betting, Again, it was it was as if I could do it over and over again, and I was I was really hooked. It was like Satan had a hook, hook and a hold on me. My first casino trip after graduating high school came at the age of 21, and I you know I had thought of going to Vegas for so long, and I thought, boy, this is this is gonna be great. I joined a fraternal organization with uh, it's actually Knights of Columbus and and uh, I gambled a lot in there, even on poker games before going on this casino trip. But uh, when we went there, there were 21 people that went to Las Vegas. And uh, it was, it was 20, 20 guys and one girl went. And the only reason the girl went is they were recent newlyweds and she wasn't going to let her husband go with us to Vegas. So she accompanied us. Got out to Las Vegas, got, I remember it was the, uh, yeah, the Sands Hotel that we were staying at. And we, uh, we got there about 11.30 and our rooms weren't ready from the night before. So they said they have a room here, give you a luggage tag, and go out and gamble and come back at about 2 o'clock and your rooms will be ready. Go out and have fun in the casino. I went out in the casino along with everybody else. But when, we got, when, when 2 o'clock arrived and it was time to get our room, myself along with several others had lost all our money. And I didn't, I'm not even checked in my room on my initial trip to Las Vegas, and I've lost all my money for the weekend. I mean, that should have really have told me that Vegas and casino gambling was not going to be, be profitable for me. But something happened to me on that first trip while I was playing craps with the money I had brought. There was a fellow there that, he, he was different than from others. He would call the guy over and they'd give him a rack of chips and he'd sign, sign a slip of paper. And, uh, and he didn't have to put up money like the rest of us. And I remember whispering to this guy next to me, I said, well, that guy across the table, you know, what, what's the situation there? How come he doesn't have to put up money? And the guy told me, well, he's a high roller. You know, he has a line of credit with the casino, and he doesn't have to put up money like the rest of us. And, you know, right then and there, I purposed in my mind that I wanted to be like him one day. And scripture says, Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that seems right unto man, but in the end it leads to death. And so even though I lost all my money in that short couple hours, uh, I saw something and coveted something that I wanted to be. After that uh, trip, uh, I uh, really started having more trouble than in sports at home. And I remember a certain circumstance where my father found out about it because I went to a, an uncle's home. I was running out of places to borrow money, as Ken said, a compulsive gambler. I saw the families and friends, and I went to like a distant uncle to try to get a loan from him. And uh, he called my parents up. He said he wasn't going to, but he did. And my dad got all, all upset, and it was my first time I had to come clean with my father. And uh, so we went out, and he, I remember, you know, he told me, you know, you just have to use willpower and stop gambling, and you've got to find yourself a woman in your life and find a good girl. Well, I did the latter. I found my wife who I'm married to today. But the other thing, as far as finding willpower, it just wasn't going to stop this gambling addiction. So I, I met I met Pat shortly after that, and uh, we had a we had a relationship. So from age like 22. To 28, we dated for like almost six years, but it was an on again, off again relationship. When I was winning, you know, I was a great guy to be around, but when I was losing, there were time periods we, we broke up. In fact, I would even tell her, you know, you know, get away from me, find somebody else, you know. I'm not the right guy, just, you know, this gambling's got me, and, you know, uh, but then when I, I get a big win, I call her back up on the phone. And